good. Uh, thanks, thanks, Martin, for the introduction. Um, he mentioned that I was uh, developing liquid culture technology to, for mass production of nematodes, but I will not talk about nematodes today. <laughs> so don't be afraid. Uh, <laughs> the nematodes sometimes don't look so nice after breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, when I looked into the program, and uh, I, I had an old version, it looks like, the, I saw that Wolfgang Reinhardt was supposed to give a talk about regulation. And uh, Wolfgang, as a counterpart, I was fighting with for quite some time because I first met him um, when we uh, had a policy support action uh, and I coordinated this policy support action which we uh, ca called Rebecca, uh, Regulation of Biological Control Agents. And um, our purpose was to make proposals to the European Commission on how uh, adapted regulation of biological control agents could look like. Uh, Wolfgang Reinhardt was the developer of uh, the 1107 2009. Now, for those who are not from Europe, um, this is the regulation which uh, uh, defines which data requirements are there to, to bring uh, pesticides to the market. And they include microbials, uh, pheromones, and uh, uh, natural products like uh, Jennifer, uh, uh, Jennifer uh, demonstrated yesterday. Um, <coughs> I had a meeting with him in 2006, and the commission was not in favor on our uh, introduction of our project because we said, the regulation of uh, microbials in Europe takes double the time than in the USA where the EPA is in charge and it is much more pragmatic and uh, the, the, uh, my, my example was always a, a product which uh, it took nine years to come to the market so this was pr quite too long. In um, 2013 until 2018 I uh, was um, a member of the executive board of IBMA uh, Jennifer, uh, I, I uh, hired Jennifer for the job of the CEO in those days, and um, um, that in those days the chemical industry got interested into biocontrol as well. We charged them a lot of money and then I used this to lobby for biocontrol. <laughs> I was the treasurer. <laughs> um, in uh, 2017, we managed to get a petition into the European Parliament uh, which was voted on on the February 15th of 2017 and it was almost anonymously accepted by the European Parliament members. And um, it was calling the, uh, for the European Commission, for the Commissioner Andriokaitis, that before the end of 2018, a fast track evaluation for low risk biological control agents should be implemented. Now, uh, we had a possibility to meet Andrew Kaitis, who was the commissioner before he went into office uh, for a breakfast meeting in his country, and he's a, medical, he's a medical doctor, so he was quite in favor of our activities. But when it came to these pet this petition activities, zero, nothing happened. Until today, there is no fast track for uh, low risk uh, biocontrol agents. Um, another uh, thing I was uh, looking at recently, in 2023, Kyriakides, the successor of Andriokaitis, in the uh, office of uh, uh, commission, commissioner, uh, she said that data requirements were much improved. Well, I compared the old, um, um, uh, data requirements and the new ones, they changed a lot of wording, but finally there, was, there were more data requirements than less, but she stood up and said now everything is easier. Well, they explained it in more detail on how it should be done, but nothing serious had been changed. So um, uh, I think that, um, well, this was, 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 was probably and all my activities I had in teaching in universities, working with students, uh, organizing international cooperation in biocontrol, field work with, uh, with farmers, building up this company. But my activities, which were for 30 years, 
uh, to try to, to move something in favor of registration that was the most frustrating activity I had in my life. And this is why I don't finish, I finished my talk now. <laughs> 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 no, don't worry. Uh, but um, the, you see, I think that um, in fact, we still, it, it is not only in the European Union, we still need less regulation, not only in the European Union, but also in the United States and everywhere. OECD is always working on harmonization, and as a result, the whole system is less flexible and less flexible every year. So um, let's uh, look into the policy finally a little bit. <coughs> so my, uh, I, I think I talk a little bit about what I find outside in my countryside. I'm coming from Germany, from the north of Germany, and one third of our agriculture area is grown with oil seed rain. And uh, since, um, is, no, that's not working there, no? Okay. <laughs> um, since, uh, but this is working here, uh, so I can see, use the pointer. This is the oil seed rape, and you see here, there are parasitaries, at least 35 parasitaries flying around the flower, trying to parasitize the larva of the pollen beetle. And um, <coughs> the pollen beetle was the major problem in oil seed rape until the ban of the neonicotine seed treatment. You probably have heard that this also has a sublethal effect to bees, and that was the reason why finally, after five years of discussions, the commission uh, prohibited the use of neonics. Now, the neonics have a very negative effect. They don't only kill bees or have an uh, effect on their orientation, but they also repel beneficial insects. And when we didn't have neonics anymore, they are transported from the seed into the flower. All of a sudden, all these antagonists occur. Now, um, you see on the left a graph from JKI in Germany, which shows how, uh, how many percentage of these uh, populations are resistant to uh, pyrethroids. By 2020, I think it was 100%. So, but, but, but farmers continue to spray. So these uh, antagonists are now probably the reason why nobody is talking about this pest anymore, and um, uh, they can go up into parasitization of 80%. So you can see that uh, <coughs> the uh, insecticides can have negative effects. Now, since the ban of this seed treatment, uh, the autumn pest, which is a, uh, the uh, rape stem flea beetle, um, is now the major pest. And you see here, on the right, also major problems with resistance. Farmers spray up to four times in autumn and can't control it. They even spray at night when everybody thinks they are on the, sitting on the plant, they don't hop away so much. But even this uh, strategy did not um, come to any control of this insect. So, <coughs> but what happens if, if they spray, they kill the parasite, this braconid uh, wasp, which uh, can parasitize the adults. And they also kill the carabid, which is feeding on the eggs of this insect. So you see another uh, uh, negative impact. And most important, the parasite of the larva comes in the spring then and uh, at bud stage of the oil seed rape. And this is exactly the time when the farmers spray against pollen beetle. And then they kill this insect as well. And this is probably the reason why we have so major problems. Because I have in, done trials in, in for several years with many farmers, and I had some farmers which said, okay, I give up on these insecticides. They don't work. They own, I only pay money, and they don't help me. And I explained them, yes, and they only kill your antagonistic potential also. And since these guys did not use anything, they have less problems with these insects. They might have a little lower yields, but uh, they have a constant buildup of these antagonistic populations. <coughs> so, as a consequence, we can say pests, incre uh, insects uh, increase in resistance. Farmers continue to spray. The problem in Germany is that um, uh, the uh, plant protection services, they don't inform the farmers about this uh, problem. Thank you. Uh, and uh, the, the, there are publications in the f journals for the farmers which still list the pesticides, 
but they don't give any information about the beneficials. So I think this is lacking in our societies that we have a real impact now in the, uh, uh, in the extension to teach uh, farmers w about the pot antagonistic potential, which they have for free. This is always the first thing I teach my students. I tell them biocontrol is more important than insecticides. They look at me and then say, ah, this crazy activist, they call me. <laughs> <laughs> Because most of them come from farms, no? they use the spray. But then I explain to them, you have a, a free antagonistic potential. If you promote it, uh, you have control no? and try to, to, to keep it well. No? So antagonistic, antagonists can provide control above the uh, economic threshold. Now this is a graph which I took from the pesticide atlas um, that is uh, published by the uh, Heinrich Böll Stiftung, that is a foundation of the Green Party in Germany. It's translated to English, to Spanish, to Italian. So um, if you look into the internet, you can find this uh, information and uh, I cite from this uh, publication. Now you see here on the left uh, a, a region uh, with uh, flowers, uh, which has never been treated with herbicides at 100%. The organic farming already reduces the biodiversity to 50% and um, uh, the conventional farming to 3%. On the t uh, right, on the top, you see the uh, impact on intensive agriculture, including pesticides and fertilizers, on the reduction of biodiversity. And you see that nearly 50% is the responsibility of uh, the pesticides and fertilizers. The second major problem are in invasive species. And this is another argument for uh, a classical biocontrol. Uh, <coughs> and on the bottom, you find the uh, blue points. Uh, that is in two th uh, 1989, the biomass of insects and um, the brown spots are then in 2016. Um, so you see the reduction of the biodiversity. It is really dramatic. And I think this is a major problem because the pesticides, I think, are the major factor for decline of biodiversity. But biodiversity is essential for us to, uh, for the, uh, the success of our biocontrol strategies. Many people complain always and say, well, your biocontrol agents don't work so well. Okay, they don't have a knockdown effect, but herbicides also don't have a knockdown effect, no? And farmers are used to wait until they see an effect. Well, with biocontrol, sometimes it needs one or two years until a real pop, uh, p population has established. But when we apply commercial products, no, they can uh, even work better if no insecticides are used or other pesticides because then the antagonistic uh, potential is adding up to what we apply in the field. So I think this is very important. And um, the, as I said already, the invasive species are another important uh, reason for classical biocontrol. Now, if you look at the chemical industry, I think that the chemical industry is in a strike. They have had their best days. I think they fight the last battle. And every year they keep their products in the market. They make billions of turnover. And no, they, they are not really interested whether they have a negative impacts or not. So resistance is causing loss of efficacy and residue problems also because farmers spray more and more. We have increasing ban of active ingredients like the neonix, agloxacar was prohibited recently. We have few innovations in the market because the chemists have cooked whatever they could and they, they, they have more than one million <coughs> compounds which they can test, but what is done in chemical industry, they just try to, um, uh, um, how do you say, the screening. They try a new screening uh, method with old compounds, and the outcome is really not like in, past, in the past. And when they come to pr the market with new products, they don't have this broad spectrum efficacy anymore. And you can see this also in the Renaxi Pure products. So the cost for development of new actives is very high and the question is also whether they have a return of investment if the products are more specific to certain areas. And uh, societies oppose the pesticide use. Pesticides uh, do not solve our problem. I think they are the problem. And in the near future, 
we will largely depend on biocontrol, and this is not in the head of the politicians. I mean, we must tell them we are coming to an end with the, in, with the pesticides, with the chemical pesticides, and that is a problem to all of us not in, in, in agriculture. So we need to take action now and support biocontrol much more. Well, if you look, this graph was already shown. It's also from this pesticide atlas, and you see that there is a tremendous increase over the last uh, 20 years in Latin America, over 100%. Now, this is not innovation, because if you look at the registration at the EU level, there are now more biocontrol agents in the registration than chemicals. And I think this is due to overuse of pesticides the pests become resistant, farmers, as a result, spray more often and higher doses. And that leads to the high amount of um, uh, uh, increase in, in uh, uh, pesticide use. Now, <coughs> the plant protection products lose quality due to development of resistance. And as a consequence, high amounts of pesticides are applied. The products lose efficacy but the profits of the chemical industry are increasing. I mean, usually if we as consumer see that the quality of a product is not well, we stop buying it. But farmers cannot do this. They just try to overcome the loss of quality which is applying more and more frequently. And I ask you, what kind of toxic business model is this? I think we must stop with this, particularly if you look what consequences the overview has. The medical treatment causes a lot of costs, and you see here, this is also from this uh, atlas, we have about 380 million poisoning, cases of poisoning in, in per year. So that ca causes a lot of uh, treatment costs. We have approximately one, one, no, 10,000 uh, fatal poisonings. We have environmental pollution. We have to treat the groundwater in Europe. They calculate now with 75 cents uh, costs per cubic meter of drinking water for cleaning. And we also have a reduction of farmers' income because they buy pesticides and they don't uh, um, um, work. So today these external costs exceed the revenues produced by the uh, pesticide uh, industry. Oops, what is this? <laughs> um, go back a one. Uh, I think we, uh, as societies, we should no longer tolerate this business practice, and we need an exit strategy now. I propose we, we need to look at each crop and see what a biocontrol model can do, what we have currently have in our toolbox, and what is needed also to add into this, and that this uh, development of these products is promoted, and there is more teaching to the farmers on how biocontrol works. We have to get out of this uh, chemical pesticide treadmill. So, um, I ask now, and now we come back to registration. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm almost finished. Um, have biocontrol agents been shown to do comparable harm, external costs? Biocontrol does not have this history of damage and externalized costs. In fact, biocontrol has a hundred <coughs> years of history of safe use. So I ask, why regulate following uh, rules developed for synthetic chemicals? Why, for example, limit authorization to 10 years? Why ask for short and long-term toxicology for microorganisms? We had a, a doc, medical doctor in the Rebecca Project, and he's, he looked at us and said, why do you kill rats? I mean, we as doctors, we know all pathogens of humans. You don't need to do this. So why data requirements? Why ask for Ecotox data when we have natural products? Why charge fees, for example, comparable to pesticide authorization? The files are much smaller than the pesticide files. So, in, in fact, we, as biocontrol industry, we subsidize the authorization of chemical pesticides. And I can talk about this for hours, but not in 10 minutes. <laughs> so, in summary, I think that we should stop the treadmill, develop exit strategies now, develop more pesticide management strategies based on biocontrol agents and biodiversity, use global biodiversity, 
and base the introduction of exotics on science and not on xenophobia. We have major problems, particularly in the vertebrates now, that some countries want their strains to be developed for their country, which is economically not, vi not viable. Uh, we should subsidize organic farming and biocontrol. I mean, the EU is subsidizing uh, agriculture industry and industrial agriculture. We can also subsidize biocontrol to make organic food cheaper also, so that people have an alternative and uh, without uh, paying more. Develop adapted regulation for biocontrol agents. We should go out of 1107, 2009, and I think this should also be done in all other countries of the world. And if you in your countries work on a new regulation, take care that you don't follow our, uh, our example. I think it was the major mistake that we were always working on microorganisms saying these are plant protection products. If we would have said these are symbionts of plants, we would be in the biosimilance regulation now, and in many countries without any regulation. So this was uh, stopping biocontrol a lot. Regulate according to agent, not use. I think we should take the microorganisms, for example, from bios used as biostimulants, animal feed, biocides, and biocontrol in one basket. And they are all of the same risk and uh, uh, regulate them, authorize them uh, in complete uh, all together. We should introduce QPS, Qualified Presumption of Safe Use, and Positive Lists. This is a uh, strategy which is done, for example, in animal feed, and it's working very well. And accelerate the market access of B, uh, BCAs, and we need a shift in paradigms. It is possible, and we heard this from Jennifer, uh, the example in Brazil, uh, we have a 40% increase in the use of biocontrol, and uh, on 50% of the areas in Brazil, biocontrol is now used. Uh, we also have an, a good example in the greenhouse in, in Europe. You see here on the right, from 2005 to 2009, the residues of, uh, 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 of uh, vegetable and fruit declined, the yellow line in the non-German EU member states, and this was due to the introduction of biocontrol invertebrates in the greenhouses in Spain and in other uh, countries in Europe. I thank you for your attention and your support to biocontrol. <laughs>